What's up guys, and Fanny here. Now, a while ago, David actually completed a Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum. So, I thought I would have a look at his team, because he actually suggested me to do this video. Where basically, I have a look at his team, his level, item, and moveset, and have a look at them, and... Basically, this part he didn't actually come up with, but I'm actually going to rank them all from 1 to 10. 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. Then when I have finished the uh, um, individual ranking, I'm going to combine the scores and find the average. That way I can determine once and for all what is the best score for this Nuzlocke team. And I'm also putting on these to stay focused. Cool. So be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it, if you want me to turn this into a series, if you want me to, if you want um, to send me like what you use for or a Nuzlocke, let me know. And if it's just just for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, the very first Pokemon that David sent me because he sent me screenshots is a Altaria that he called Cloud. Very original. Um, it's level 55 while holding the Dragon Fang. That will increase its Dragon type moves by 10%, maybe 20, I believe. With the moves Fly, Dragon Dance, Earthquake, and Dragon Claw. I don't actually mind the move set because with Dragon Dance, it will power up all of its physical attack moves, and it only knows physical attack moves. Like Dragon Claw and Fly are. Pretty decent stab moves, and Earthquake's good for coverage against any Steel types you may come across, because since Dragon and Flying type moves don't really do a lot against, well, Steel types. Personally, I would have swapped Earthquake with Flamethrower, because that way not only will it cover against Steel types, it'll also cover against Ice type Pokemon. I do know that he did use his Flamethrower TM on a different Pokemon, but he could have gotten one from the Veilstone game corner. Like, I personally think that if he, he had stuck on Flamethrower, it would have been probably one of the best Pokemon on his team. But, I don't know. Like, it is good, just it's got very, very tiny little details that I think could have been better. So, I would say I would rank his Altaria... I'll give it a 9 out of 10, because the moveset's good, but it definitely needs Flamethrower. And, to most of you, Artaria isn't exactly the strongest Pokemon in the world. I'm honestly surprised I actually made it through the entire Nuzlocke, because David told me that none of his actually none of his Pokemon actually died from um, when he challenged the Elite Four with this team. So, I don't know. I just feel like there could have been a better option. If you wanted a better uh, Dragon-type, go with Garchomp. Okay, the next Pokemon that David sent me is a Rhyperia at level 56 that he nicknamed Rocky. Very original, David. I've got to say, I really like Rhyperia. I think it's a great Pokemon. Definitely not the best ground-type option in the world, but... Could be worse. You could have had Hippowdon. It's holding the Rock Incense, which will power up all um, Rock-type moves by... 20%, maybe 10, I can't remember. With the moves Earthquake, Hammer Arm, Rock Slide, and Poison Jab. Now, Earthquake and Rock Slide, I can understand. I don't get why it's got Hammer Arm. Poison Jab makes a little bit more sense because coverage against grass types. But of, out of all of the moves in the world, Hammer Arm? Why Hammer Arm? Like, you could have taught it another coverage move, like. Maybe even Avalanche, because that way, since it's so slow and it knows the ability Solid Rock, it could have tanked the attack and then used Avalanche. Like, maybe another coverage move against one of the types that it's weak against would have worked. But I don't get why it's got Hammer Arm. Plus, I don't see how it is that useful in some of the main story. Like, it's not the greatest Pokemon in the world, like, I'm sorry David, but it is not as useful as some other ground types. I mean, I don't know, like Garchomp. But, Rhyperia is alright, I would probably give this Rhyperia, 
I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Because Rhyperia is really good. It's just not the best Pokemon to pick from out of the ground type options. Plus, its moveset is a bit confusing. But still, it's a decent Pokemon. Okay, the third Pokemon is a Porygon Z called Lego at level 55 and holding the Silk Scarf. The Silk Scarf powers up all normal type moves, as you already know. And with Porygon's very high special attack stats, that could be very helpful. And its moveset is Nasty Plot, Dark Pulse, Tri-Attack, and Hyper Beam. Why Dark Pulse? Shadow Ball would have been a much better option. I'm sorry, but I just think Shadow Ball would have been a much better option. Nasty Plot makes sense to power up all special attacks, and Tri Attack and Hyper Beam definitely also make sense because it's Stab. Tri Attack has a chance to burn, freeze, and paralyze, and Hyper Beam's just there to Oko anything. So, it does make sense. I just don't know how useful it would be in a, like, best team. Like, Porygon Z is a good Pokemon, it's just a major pain in the ass to evolve. First, you have to give it, it a item and then trade it over to another Pokemon game, then trade it back, and then wait till literally near the end of the game, put the item on it, trade it again, and then trade it back. It's just a major pain in the ass, and it's not really the best Pokemon to uh, use in a playthrough of Pokemon Platinum. So, I would probably give this Porygon Z... I'll probably give it a 7 out of 10, because Porygon Z is very good, it's just, it's not the best to use in a playthrough, and its moveset definitely could use work. Literally just swap out Dark Pulse and Shadow Ball, it would have been an 8. Okay, the next Pokemon is a Jolteon called NC Spoon, while holding a Magnet, and it's at level 56. The Magnet powers up all electric type moves, as you already know. I get the feeling that David probably made all of his Pokemon hold moves that power up all of its stab moves. <laughs> and it's got the moves Quick Attack, Shockwave, Thunderbolt, and Light Screen. Uh... Okay, this is where I'm going to get a little bit picky. Quick Attack on a Jolteon. Really? Okay, Shockwave? No. Like, it would have been good if you just taught it uh, Shockwave until you got Thunderbolt. Replace uh, Shockwave with Thunderbolt and you would have been fine. But Light Screen? Really? Like, everyone knows that Jolteon's worst uh, like defense stat is its physical attack stat. If you wanted to uh, teach it a move that heightens one of its defenses, you should have taught it Reflect, of all things. But if it were me, stick on Rain Dance and Thunder. That way, Rain Dance can not only make Thunder 100% accurate, but it can also power up any Water-type moves you may have. So, say if you have a Water-type on your team, which I am fairly certain that he did have on his team, you could have taught it Rain Dance, and then it w Thunder would have been 100% accurate. But Thunderbolt and Shockwave just ain't it. And Quick Attack definitely is not it, because it's a physical attack move, and Jolteon's a special attacker. You could have taught it Hidden Power at least. Like, just don't teach physical attack moves to a Jolteon. Now for the ranking. I do like the fact that David used the best electric type option in the game. But the moveset definitely needs work. So I would probably... Probably give this Jolteon a 7 out of 10, mainly because it ha has a physical attack move and the light screen is not the best uh, like status move to raise its defenses. I would have taught it Reflect. Okay, his fifth Pokemon is an Infernape that he n rotated a lot with nicknames. First off, it was What's Up Guys as an homage to me, which I think he should have stuck with. Then he named it Flame, and now its name is Goldeen. And it's not spelt correctly. But 
Basically, he named it Goldeen because he thinks that I, I should change my mascot to Goldeen, but I'm not changing my mascot to Goldeen because I'm Robert the Infernape, not Robert the Goldeen. But it is at a respectable level. It's level 57, and it's holding the Fist Plate, which will power up all fighting type moves. With the moves Flamethrower, Shadow Claw, Close Combat, and U-Turn. By far, the best Pokemon I have seen so far. And I'm not just saying that because it's my favorite Pokemon of all time. Its moveset is definitely the best it can be. I love how David has made this Pokemon. That's why I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Because it is by far the best Pokemon that I've seen so far. Like, Flamethrower, Shadow Claw, Close Combat, and U-Turn is really, really good. Two stab moves, and it also the no Shadow Claw for cover edge against Psychic types, and possibly some Ghost types, and U-Turn to dish out some damage, and switch in a Pokemon that can better handle a Pokemon that he's facing. The final Pokemon is a Gold Duck called Headbanger. As you know, Headbang, sorry, it's Headbang. And it's level 57 while holding the Mystic Water. And its moves is Ice Beam, Psychic, Surf, and Hydro Pump. I love three of those moves. Ice Beam, Psychic, and Surf, they should stay. However, I think he should have taught the Earthquake TM to this Golduck to cover Electric type moves. I don't really like it when may when a single type Pokemon knows two war uh, two moves that, that type. Like I would only use that if there were no better options. And Earthquake is a much better option than Hydro Pump. But I do really like this Golduck, so I will rank it a 9 out of 10. So just to recap, Altaria is a 9 out of 10, Rhyperior is 8 out of 10, Porygon Z 7 out of 10, Jolteon is 7 out of 10, Infernape is 10 out of 10, and Golduck is 9 out of 10. So that means the average score and the final score is an 8.3 out of 10. I definitely think this is a very good team. Definitely needs a little bit of minor work, but literally, like I said, the uh, it's just really minor things. So overall, it's a pretty decent team. And there it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. What art uh, Pokemon you would put on your Nuzlocke team? How you found this Nuzlocke team that I reacted to? If you want me to react to your Nuzlocke teams. And if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the video as much as I did making it? If you did, be sure to give it a massive thumbs up. Comment down below, share this video with a friend. And if you're new, subscribe to my channel. It's been Inferno today. Okay, that's all for me. So until the next time, this is Inferno signing off. Bye!